Let me be more specific when I talk about using the Internet for research. We've been using the Internet to research already, right? We've looked at books and articles, almost all of which were on the Internet. Yes, but we were going through the library sources, most of which are not free. This week we'll be focusing on what we can find by searching using a general search engine like Google. Let's be honest here, about 100% of all of us start our research by going to Google. Yes, even I do this. We talked about this earlier in the semester. We are getting background information and learning more about our topic. This is a good thing. It's hard to search the library database as well if you don't have any sort of grasp of the topic. The trouble comes when you take what you find at face value. Most of us understand that not everything published on the Internet is true, credible, worthwhile, etc. But many sites will take advantage of our existing biases, our fears, our lack of knowledge on a subject. The anti-vaccine movement is a perfect example of this. We may already think that our kids get too many shots, we're afraid that something bad might happen to them, but we don't know everything there is to know about weighing risks and benefits. So we decide to do some research online, and even though there's a ton of good stuff from the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and others, the fear websites pull us in with their anecdotes and scary language. Many very smart people get pulled down that rabbit hole on all kinds of topics, mainly because they are using their emotions, biases, and fears versus critically evaluating the information. I am definitely not immune from this either. A lot of these sites really scared me too. We are going to be focused on using Google for research this week. No, this is not a contradiction. Google can definitely be used for college level research. It's all about learning which of the cool advanced features to use, how to narrow in on just what you need, and how to evaluate what you find. Google is an essential tool as long as you think critically about what you find. Not all information on the Internet is created equal. Sometimes it can be hard to tell the good from the less than good. But there are some clues that you can use to figure out more about the website. We'll focus on domain names. These are at the end of a website, the .com, the .edu, and so on. Well, what do these really mean? A .com is probably what you see the most of. These can be created by anyone. I mean anyone, from a PhD researcher to a 13-year-old girl who wants to declare her undying love for One Direction. Usually you can tell the difference, but sometimes it can be hard to detect that the website is not a good source of information. Dot-com sites are usually commercial in nature. That is, they're trying to sell you a product or even an idea. When looking at a dot-com site, you want to identify the author or sponsor, verify the credentials, and examine the purpose. You've already had experience with this when using the CRAAP criteria. While the .org site was originally intended for nonprofit organizations or organizations with a non-commercial focus, this no longer holds true. Anyone can register a .org site, and many commercial interests do this just to mislead the public into thinking the website is not trying to sell them something. So, watch especially close for bias or misleading information on a .org site. A good question to ask when looking at a .org site is, what's the purpose of this site or page? And here's a good example on the slide. I have the American Heart Association, which is a .org. Everyone trust them. It's a pretty good organization. But there was also this site called youngagain.org. Took me about 45 seconds to figure out the whole purpose of this was to sell you a product. A .edu site is for higher education institutions, colleges, and universities. The information contained on a .edu site tends to be better than a .com, but you still need to think critically when looking at the information. Just like with the .com, you need to identify the author, verify the credentials, and examine the purpose. The last biggie is the .gov. This is for any U.S. government site. This includes federal, state, and local websites. I consider the .gov, along with the .edu, to be one of the most trustworthy domains. Of course, some information is going to be biased, but a lot of great statistics and data can only be found on a .gov site. It's important with .gov information to identify the sponsoring agency and find the date the information was created. You are all becoming masters of applying the CRAAP criteria to articles and books. It was actually originally created to help you evaluate websites, so this is where it really shines. 
break that worksheet back out as it will really help you critically evaluate what you find.